Hello friends, Pastor Dave here for our daily devotional. I'm glad to be here with you. In fact, I'm glad to be anywhere. I was just in a car accident. And uh, I'm glad nobody got hurt. And I'm glad that I wasn't at fault, even though the other guy said he had a green light. He didn't. He ran through a red light and I hit him. But I'm glad nobody was hurt. Uh, But I'm sure everything's gonna work out. And uh, I'm just glad to be able to be here with you. Yesterday, we started a a series of just two devotionals from Ephesians 4, and we talked about how God gave the leaders of the church to equip all the people to to do the works of service, and so that we could all grow up into Christ and attain the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. What does it look like? Let's talk about that on something deeper. So last night we talked about Ephesians 4 where Paul says that the leaders of the church are there to equip the people of the church to do the work of the church and that we should become mature. And in verse 14 and following, he talks about what that looks like. He writes, Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. I've seen people that were like infants, tossed back and forth by every wind of teaching. You know, one day they believe this, one day they believe that. And when you're kids, you know, you, that's what you do. You have to discover what you believe. But someday, you should start to settle down on that and figure out what you do believe. I've seen it in the church where something new comes along like um, the laughing revival and people spend an hour or two laughing like a maniac and say that's the Holy Spirit without one shred of support for that in the Bible. And they say, well, that's, that's the Holy Spirit. And other people say, well, it's a new thing. It must be true. Just because it's new doesn't mean it's true. We do that in culture as well. Um, just to get on one controversial thing. In our culture, we've always known that there are people that had gender dysphoria, that they they feel like they're in the wrong sex body. They're a man in a woman's body or they're a woman in a man's body. But it's only in the last few years, very few years, where our culture has decided that we don't want to treat them and tell them, hey, let's come to the truth of who you are, but that everybody else in the culture should affirm them for what they are not. We are called to speak the truth in love. That means somebody who has gender dysphoria, we certainly should love that person and have compassion for that person. What a horrible thing to struggle with. And the suicide rate for them is very high, like 40%. But we also should speak the truth in love. And just because our culture has said it's not socially acceptable to tell the truth anymore, doesn't mean we as believers can abandon the truth. And I don't think we're doing any favors to people who are struggling with their identity to say that you can change your basic makeup with hormones or, or, or with surgery. And it seems like it doesn't help in the suicide rate either for those who've gone through a surgical transition or hormone treatment that the suicide rate is still very, very high. Now, people make their own choices and they can, they can do their own thing. I'm, I'm not in charge of everybody else's decisions, but I am in charge of what God has called me to do and what, what I believe in that. And that is, I want to speak the truth in love. I find truth in God's word and I want to find it in there and stick to that no matter what our culture is saying. Our culture has lo- left the truth of God's word in many, many ways. But I'll tell you, if it comes down to a choice between what our culture says and what God's word says, I'll go with God's word every time. I think our culture is massively confused. And so let's speak the truth in love and grow to become in every respect a mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. 
we can't have truth without love. But it's not very loving if we have love without the truth. So let's hold on to both of them and give it to this culture that needs Jesus so desperately. Let's pray. Father, today I do pray for those that are struggling in their identity, whether it's their sexual identity or any other. Father, I pray for those that have come from broken broken families and feel that uh, they don't fit in, for those who feel like they can't uh, cope without some chemical addiction that they have. And Father, I pray that we as a church will have compassion on those who are lost. And I pray, Father, we will remember our own sinfulness and the grace that you give to us. And I pray that we will offer that grace to everyone. I also pray, Father, that we will stand up for truth and and believe it and speak it in love. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. God bless you. Love you all. Stay safe and take care.